like to welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. A lot of the unique perspective that I roll out on the channel that unfortunately you will not get on a lot of other channels is experience. Uh, I typically try to keep my opinion at bay when I'm rolling out and talking about what I consider to be a very uh, uh, very serious topic um, when we're talking about where you could potentially put your money. And I know there's a lot of people on the receiving end of my message that appreciate uh, that fact about my channel. And I think there's a lot of differing opinions about passive investing approach, uh, what it means to invest in an exchange traded fund to whatever capacity you choose, either invest or don't invest. All right. If you choose not to invest, you you could be foregoing um, an opportunity in the market that, uh, you know, by, that's your choice. And um, but I, I think I, I find it interesting how um, a lot of opinions that you'll hear about passive investing is that it's not exciting enough. It doesn't make me enough money. It's the slow road to China, you know, whatever it may be. And I think a lot of those are opinion based and they are not uh, backed by fact. The fact is that passive investing has made a lot of people a lot of money in the markets. Now, when I roll out these awareness videos on my passive program, I don't expect you to tune in and, and say, wow, Ryan's rich. That's not that's not the idea. That's not how I approach wealth building. It's not how I approach investing. But this does work. And that is not my opinion. It, it is fact based. And so when I roll these out to you guys for awareness purposes, I really want you guys to understand the importance of the passive investing opportunity. Number one. Number two, I want you to consider what it means to maybe potentially become a passive investor in some capacity. It doesn't have to be your entire program in the least. But this just uh, showcases not only the account with M1 Finance, but it also shows the power of ETF investing. I typically uh, would opt for a Vanguard product. That's just my personal preference. Um, you guys can choose whatever ETF that you want. I like Vanguard uh, for it boasting one of the lowest fees uh, to access uh, the market. So you get the biggest bang for the buck for the cheapest price. And I'm all about that. So when we're talking about saving investors money over the long term, I'm all about that because those cost savings can really fall to the bottom line, especially as you stay invested over the course of your entire life. So on the top end here, I think it's uh, prudent to understand how long I've had the account going till March 5th, about 2019. So just over a couple of years old on this account, nothing too crazy. I do fund this account up dollar cost average um, with a, a pretty conservative amount and it does fluctuate. It really does. I would say that this dollar cost average funding to this account is probably a little bit more on the aggressive side, to be honest with you. I do about $300 to $400 on average of dollar cost average inflows into the account. And that's where this $12,200 those are the real net cash flows into the account. Now the capital gains, 5207 over a conducive market, nothing to shake a sick stick at. Those are real results rendered in a portfolio that I do nothing to maintain, nothing. The only work was on the onset when I established this portfolio some two and a couple months, two years and a few months ago when I, when I started this to meet this strategic goal of having an account that took zero time away from what it is that I would do and work when it is that I'm doing other things. This renders a nice dividend to 343. Um, so these will start to snowball uh, in due time. Uh, next strategic goal in this account is 25,000. I'll just declare to you guys that the strategic goal long term, maybe even medium term, I don't know how quickly I could do it, uh, but is to get this account up to 100,000. And uh, once we do that, we'll make a decision on um, the, the final disposition of this portfolio. I don't know if I'll keep it with M1 Finance uh, or if I'll transfer it into my larger brokerage account uh, in due time. But for the meantime, this works. This works really, really well. I've got this divided across all 11 sectors of the S&P 500. This is one uh, of my brokerage accounts that I actually do justify putting 
some real estate exposure in. So you'll see the real estate REIT in this uh, portfolio here in VNQ. We got a little bit in there, $1,355, not too bad. But um, usually I would keep those under the tax protection of the um, of the Roth IRAs. And that's what I do. I actually own VNQ in my Roth IRA specifically. But these are the 11 sector specialty ETFs. Uh, this gives uh, specific uh, coverage, not broad-based uh, coverage across all sectors. This is specific to each of the sectors. So this is only going to have technology. This is only going to have healthcare. This is only going to have financials. But some of these ETFs are pretty big. Some of these range from a few thousand stocks to as little as the ETF for Vanguard's utilities, I believe, is 58 stocks last time I checked. So some of them can be relatively s small uh, from a number of stocks that you're getting exposure to perspective. Uh, however, uh, regulated utilities are by no means small companies. So, uh, And 58 utilities companies is actually a pretty broad um, exposure to the utilities uh, sector as a whole. Um, so this is the allocation that I have. I want you guys to pay particular attention to a few things, and this can be of use for you uh, if you deem that something similar to this, if not the exact same portfolio, can be of use to you. Uh, I do provide the links in all of my videos. You guys are welcome to check that out at your leisure. Independent Investor Channel is affiliated with M1 Finance. If you click on any of the links, we can receive a small compensation for me providing the tutorial like this to you. I think it helps a lot to sit across from somebody like myself who's worked with M1 Finance for going on a couple of years now. Uh, every year that goes by, I like the product more. I, I think it's an absolutely fabulous product. I am part of M1 Plus. The, I've been asked about this a few times. I don't typically take full advantage of the M1 Finance uh, program. However, in my interviews with uh, Mr. Barnes, the CEO of, of uh, M1 Finance, their goal is to become more of a full service suite of financial services. So if that's um, something that you would like, um, they do have that opportunity for the M1. You get a little bit better interest rate on the checking. You've got access to M1 borrow, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of people really like it. I get rave reviews. I just personally don't use it. Using M1 Finance as a brokerage platform is good enough for me because I these guys have absolutely revolutionized investing. And, and to impress me in the investing world is good enough. I'm hard enough to impress as it is. But um, you impress me, then um, that's, that's saying something. But the ability to come in here and buy these ETFs to dollar cost average these every month is worth its weight in gold for me. And it can be worth its weight in gold for you as well in that, you know, dollar cost averaging over historical um, over hi historical terms with certain brokerage accounts have been an, an excuse to charge you. Uh, I remember a time when I was charged um, five and three quarter percent every single month for the inflow of dollars that were going into my mutual funds. And that is just a thing of the past. It shouldn't exist. It still exists to today. Um, from some of the major brokerage houses out there that try to look at your account as an opportunity for them to make money, which is not in your best interest. What is in your best interest is to identify a program that you can resonate and relate with, put to work for yourself and yourself alone. Okay, You don't need to tie your money up uh, to the lack of service of the big financial institutions. You might as well just keep all those chips on your side because the rewards and the benefits are uh, unquestionable. So you can see here, if you pay particular attention, pretty pretty good range of dollar amounts here up to about 2,500, all the way down to about 1,000 just shy of here. I believe this is uh, materials on the bottom end, yeah. But I want you to pay particular attention to the amount that um, is currently invested compared to the amount of actual capital appreciation that's been rendered in this account. These are enormous numbers, guys, for the amount of money that's invested, but quite simple. This is impressive. And for new investors that scoff at the passive investing opportunity, you're really missing the point. It's an extremely short-sighted evaluation of what has historically worked. 
by taking on as little risk as possible in stock market investing and rendering the maximum benefits over time. Now, if the market goes down, this account is going to suffer. There's no doubt about it. I'm not here to blow smoke at people. Okay. This has been a conducive market. Um, the market has slightly gone up and to the right. That's what we want it to do. But at the same time, I don't, I don't worry about this portfolio. If this thing goes down, what I'll end up doing is waiting until it's down 20, 30, 40. The market's proven it can go down 50%, guys. And it can. Uh, at, and it won't give you a notice on, and, on when it's going to do that. If it does that and it damages this account and reduces the value of the account, I will just increase my funding contribution and will invest more. Right now, I'm investing what I feel comfortable with in this on a true passive program, and I'm comfortable with it. I sleep easy at night. These are as low cost as I can get them. These are as high reward as I can get them for a passive program. And they're uh, divvied up in a way that makes sense to me. And, and that, at the end of the day, is good enough for me. And I would expect if you go through the same deliberation that I do in establishing a program like this, uh, that you can substantiate, justify it for yourself as well. The final thing I'll mention here is the targets. The targets basically is just what, how many dollars or what percentage of the dollars do I want to flow into each of these sectors respectively. So I've got this broken down. This is custom. You can do this however you feel, fit, however you want. You can look at this and say, I don't like what Ryan does at all. I'm going to change the allocation all around. That's the whole idea. The whole idea is not that you come in the independent investor channel and do it like me, uh, albeit you could and probably... I don't know, maybe have some success that I do. These are real numbers. These are not made up. This is not fairy tale. Um, this is this is not um, this is not fantasy land. This is just investing. That's all. And if if I'm looking at this correctly, all eleven out of eleven are up and in the green, handily, I might add. So if you want to tell me that it doesn't work, I would just uh, respectfully disagree with you. Um, Furthermore, I would say that this program, from a passive perspective, uh, can work for any investor out there, no matter what your experience level. And that's really the important takeaway is to understand that this right here is customizable. This entire portfolio is customizable. Um, you can add whatever you want in this, but this is just how I choose to do it. Represents the entire S&P 500 split up 11 different ways and uh, we live to fight another day. So very cool way of investing, man. It's um, it's great. I enjoy sharing these with the greater independent investor community. It's not necessarily about getting in and checking out the products within a portfolio. As fun as that is, the deeper um, insight to my channel is to understand that I deploy a lot of experience when I put these portfolios to work. And experience in the stock market goes a long, long way. You would never hear me say passive investing doesn't work. You would never hear me say passive investing isn't for everybody. You'd never hear me say that. You would never hear me say that you can't make money with passive investing or, or, or that it sucks uh, or that I'm growing wealth too slowly. My realistic expectations of the stock market are derived from multiple decades of experience and I know where to separate my opinion from fact. So if you appreciate the message coming through on the Independent Investor channel, then make sure and subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video. Hit the thumbs up on the video. I guess that helps us on the algorithm. That'd be lovely. Uh, hit the notification bell. I upload frequently to YouTube. Thank you so much for tuning into the message. And good luck in your investment future.